There's this other thing that I thought was pretty cool. Oh, my God. I just saw this headline. Have you seen this? Look at that headline. Alec Baldwin sues Russ Crew for negligence, wants to clear his name. Yo, Alec Baldwin is the most brazen white man I've ever come across in my entire life. He accidentally murked somebody on set. And just the other day, he posted a flipping TBT anniversary post of her. Like, bruv, you killed that woman, inadvertently or not. You bloody killed her. And now here you are, <laughs> flipping what, wishing her a flipping what, happy anniversary of her death or something. Like, the guy is insane. The fact that he wants to clear his name and sue the crew of that, of that, of that flipping show is absolutely insane anyway. But Jesus Christ, man, the brazenness on this white man is just amazing. The cojones on him. And Kona's is Spanish, right? Because he's got a Spanish wife. Oh, no, she's not Spanish. She's she's from middle America, but she pretended she was from Spain. That girl was flipping amazing to his wife. Oh, my God. What an incredible story, that one, isn't it, right? She flipping cosplays as Spanish her entire life, but she's actually from, like, New Hampshire or something. Like, fully, fully white. No Latin, no Spanish about her whatsoever. <laughs> incredible. Anyway, coach your deadline. Chris Rock to be the first comedian to perform live on Netflix. Uh-oh. This is big news because this is going to be the next big frontier for stand-up comedians to complain about on podcasts. Because at the moment, they're complaining that they don't, they all don't get hours anymore. Netflix is only offering them 30 minutes now. And the common thing that everyone's doing now is, is the Brendan Schaub thing, right? Is that you lie about getting offers from all these big streaming companies and then you just put it out on YouTube because you're self-conscious that you're not getting offers from big streaming companies, even though you shouldn't care about streaming company offers because YouTube is the way to go anyway, especially if you're a, you know, you're not that famous of a comedian anyway. You're never going to become, you know, Sebastian Mansalk or whatever. Do you know what I mean, that's not, that's not in your flipping future anyway. So why not just put it out on YouTube, reach your own fans, have the metrics there in black and white, make some money off the back of it, and then use that flipping show to do other deals, isn't it? W what is the problem? Like, I never understood that Brenda Shaw thing of lying that you got deals anyway. What It doesn't matter. Like, deals aren't cool. Um, they don't do nothing for you. If you're being a show, actually getting a deal for, with Netflix might actually do you more harm than good because people will compare you to other good people on Netflix, which is not fair. You're not as good as the other guys. So maybe just play on YouTube where there's everybody from an open micer to a flipping 30 year veteran on there. That probably is the best place to promote yourself. But anyway, this is going to be the new thing they're going to be complaining about. Do you get offered a special from Netflix as live? For us, the viewer, I have to say, I think this is best because i have to be honest i don't know about you guys in the chat be honest in the chat be honest be honest be honest what is the last special you watched in full one sitting what's the last comedy special you watched in full in one sitting if i have to think about it i would say it might be this this um the special that i think is on the screen there that chris rock one um is it a Chris Rock one? No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was the last Dave Chappelle one, actually. That's when it was. Whatever the last Dave Chappelle um, specials were on Netflix, that was the last one I watched um, all the way through in one sitting. The rest of them I started, hadn't finished. Tom Segura's one, Burt Kreischer's one. Um, which one as well? I can't think of any more. I think that was it, really. Those were the ones I kind of started and never ever finished. But honestly, man, like this might be a good way to kind of go f go with it especially some of the bigger names because if you're paying chris rock dave chappelle and joe rogan upwards of 10 million if you're netflix you have to make your money back somehow and the only way to make it back is to make sure people are watching it and again they're big comedians but you need people to be sitting down watching it when it first drops and the best way to do it is obviously to do it live so interesting to see how it works because i still think there is something to be said for that collective experience everyone kind of tweeting about it in real time and whatnot like a sports game kind of helps and adds to it like i mentioned previous times before i went to see chris no chris D'Elia perform one time at the laugh factory many many years ago this is around a time where i didn't really think he was funny at stand-up at all but i actually liked him on podcasts i thought he was hilarious but i didn't really like his stand-up but then when i saw him in person in the laugh factory i kind of got it and i understood it is two different things to see stand-up on internet on youtube and to also see it in real life it's completely different um people that you probably wouldn't find funny at all at home you find them way funnier in, in real life with a couple of drinks down you with a couple chicken fingers in your belly with maybe a cute chick or boy next to you it kind of adds to the whole experience so this makes a lot of sense to me 
Um, so it says Netflix is utilizing its move into live streaming technology with Chris Rock becoming the first person to test it out. Rock will perform in a global live stream event in 2023. It comes after the deadline revealed in May that the streamer is experimenting with this technology. Interesting. It's interesting to do this because they just also promote, they just also announced that they're going to have a tier of Netflix subscriptions where it's cheaper, but you get ads, right? So I could imagine them utilizing those ads during the live stream, which would be a bit of a bummer. You have to sit there and watch the ad, but that would be a good way to kind of sell the ads also to the companies um, and get higher bids for them and make some money back because Netflix at the moment isn't making money. They're not making good original content. So maybe this is a good way to go about it. It was noted that upon Chris Rock, sorry, what? It was noted upon that Rock, no, it was noted upon that Rock had another Netflix special to come out after his infamous slap incident with, from Will Smith at the Oscars. Rock has been out of his ego death tour over the last few months and during a show in London promised that he would discuss more about his Oscar experience on Netflix. <laughs> That's a good way to promote. It's funny, isn't it? Anything that happens to you, any mishap, whether it's good or bad, can be monetized and used to your advantage. There is no such thing as bad if you're a celebrity a bad event a a um, distressing event it doesn't really exist maybe it exists in the moment you can be distressed and caught up and sad about it but ultimately that sad event is going to put food in your kid's stomach is going to pay for their private school is going to maybe pay for a first car holiday engagement ring like your holiday your balenciagas right your Givenchy's. like it's gonna it's gonna help you out so you know you get sat by Will Smith. You're suddenly thinking, yes, I'm going to be a millionaire for life. Um, it also marks Chris Rock's um, second special after Tambourine. The yeah, Tambourine was really good. That was one with the lights that came up from the ground. I think that was the one that, um, who's that guy did it? Helped him out producing it. Uh, Bo Burnham. I think Bo Burnham produced it for him. I'm not too sure. If I'm, I'm all right or not. I wish Bo Burnham would go and Joe Rogan, man. I think he'll be good. I know ideologically they're not, you know, aligned, but I think they'll make, they'll make for a really good conversation. Um, it continues to say he also appeared on Netflix Joke Festival alongside Dave Chappelle earlier this year. Chris Rock is one of the most iconic and important comedy voices in our generation, said Robbie Pro, the Netflix vice president of stand-up comedy and formats. That's a brilliant title, isn't it? Netflix vice president of stand-up comedy and formats. And comedy formats. That's a brilliant title. Um, we're thrilled. What do you think he gets paid, right? <laughs> That's a proper salary. We're thrilled that the entire world will be able to experience a live Chris Rock comedy event and a part of the Netflix history. This will be an unforgettable moment, and we also honor that Chris Rock has carried his torch. This is interesting, man. I'd like to see this um kind of you know go into sports and stuff as well. That'd be flipping cool. Um, going forward i'm really really looking forward to seeing how this works but for sure be prepared if you listen to comedy based podcasts you're going to hear a lot of comedians be complaining when some of them get offered live ones certain don't because this is only reserved for the big dogs right the ones that actually have the numbers to back it up like the chris rocks the dave chappelle's the fluffies the joe rogan's um who else is a big one that New Zealand girl that everyone hated, that she does horrible, but I'm sure she's going to pull in numbers. Even the likes of Amy Schumann stuff, right? Tiffany Haddish may get one. Um, Kevin Hart, all those people are probably going to get live ones. So be prepared to hear comedians complaining on podcasts because they don't get live flipping Netflix deals when some of them are flipping struggling to get 30-minute deals. But it doesn't really matter anyway because I think YouTube is the 